everyone welcome to this session by intellipad where we are diving into some of the most commonly asked software testing interview questions along with their answers after analyzing over hundreds of real world software testing interviews we have crafted this video whether you are a fresher or an experienced tester this video will help you ace your next interview and increase your chances of standing out among the other candidates now if you're wondering whether software testing is a good career path let me share some of the key industry insights According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics project the overall employment of software developers including software tester is projected to grow 17% from 2023 to 2033 if you look at the job portals like linkedin you will notice that there are over 21000 plus software testing jobs in india alone ranging from manual testers to automation experts when it comes to compensation early software testing professionals in india typically earn an average of 5.5 lakhs annually With few years of experience on the bag the salaries can further climb as high as 20 lakhs rupees now having these facts in mind can boost your confidence but knowing the facts alone won't crack an interview you need to have a thorough understanding of key concepts in software testing that recruiters frequently ask about that's why in the next few minutes we will go and cover the software testing interview questions that covers a variety of topics from manual testing to automation testing and everything in between so get ready to dive into these essential questions But before we begin don't forget to subscribe to Intellipath's YouTube channel for more helpful content like this. Let's get started with the very first question on our list. Coming to the first question on this top software testing interview questions and answers said it states uh, compare software testing and debugging. One well, there's three really important points that we have to discuss whenever we're talking about debugging and software testing. The first is the process of its working because in software testing you will know all the conditions that are present you will know what the expected input is expected output is and what is the outcome that needs to be achieved and you're going to be checking either software or applications or whatever it is to see if it fails uh, to have the expected outcome or not so you already know what uh, is going to happen but in the process of debugging the conditions are unknown and the outcome is not known to you right so it might either work it might fail it might give you an entirely different output that you are expecting so that kind of an unpredictability is the main difference between software testing and debugging and then when we're talking about prerequisites right so uh, for software testing you will not require uh, you know a large amount of uh, designing the entire software itself or designing the application itself because there are certain standard uh, you know methodologies that you can use for software testing but for debugging that's a little different because here you will require full design knowledge on uh, you know you you have to be the person who has written the software to know where the bug is and uh, you know how you can work on removing it and the third point is the goal uh, the goal of software testing is to talk about how you can find errors and bugs and see uh, you know how test cases fail uh you know a good software tester will have the capability and you know will be happy to find software uh, testing cases that actually fail uh, to uh, you know have the expected outcome so this is probably the only field where failing is uh, good uh, you know and another thing about uh, debugging is that in debugging here we try to uh, find the root cause that uh, causes the error and of course of the bug and uh, we tend to fix it as well so this is the difference uh, that lies in between software testing and debugging coming to the second question states explain monkey testing monkey testing is a very very popular uh, technique that we use in software testing where we're trying to have the application you know uh, see all the random inputs we have at hand so when you start ingesting inputs randomly and you know since there will be no preordered rule or preordered methodology through which the data comes into the uh, machine uh, you can have a quick idea and a complete scope on how the application behaves when it sees uh, you know a random input it's rather than a structured one so as the name suggests monkey testing is all about you monkeying around with the input to make sure uh, you know the application or the software works well and it's it's an extremely popular uh, way of uh, testing software today too coming to question number 3 uh, it says what is the difference that exists between baseline and benchmark testing see one thing about baseline testing that you have to talk about is that here we run a set of tests to understand what the performance of the machine is like uh you know performance of the software is like how how is it dependent on you know the working of that native operating system the machine or whatever it is so you're trying to understand how your software behaves in general 
But what are we comparing this against, right? So we're comparing it against the industry standards that exist that say, hey, this is what uh, is the standard that is set and is your software up to that mark or not? And baseline testing also talks about how you can improve the performance of your know, application or the software with all the information that gets collected too. Uh, in benchmark testing, what happens is that we're trying to improve the uh, application performance by trying to match it with the benchmarks as we told, right? So with benchmark testing, you have to compare it with something. Baseline testing is going to give you the performance of it benchmark testing is going to give you uh, the performance of it of course but then you will have certain standards to see if you have met that or not and another thing about benchmark testing is that to improve the performance uh, you know once you improve the performance basically it will uh, you know go towards the benchmark or even break the benchmark too so this is the basic difference that lies uh, in between baseline testing and benchmark testing now coming to the fourth question uh, it states explain bug life cycle so what happens once a tester finds a bug? See, the first step itself is a tester uh, finding a bug and the bug gets a status either called as new or open. It means that it has not been assigned or it's not been fixed yet. Then we have the project development managers uh, who will try to analyze the bug. They will assess it and they will check if it's actually a valid bug or not. And of course, if it's an invalid bug or something that can be fixed right then and there, they'll fix it there. And of course, the bug gets rejected and its status will now be rejected. But what if it's a valid bug? Now, if it's a valid bug, they try to see if there was something, you know, in the past that they've uh, had a similar occurrence with what's at hand now. If yes, uh, they're going to call that a duplicate bug. But if not, it's still going to remain as open. It's going to still remain as new uh, where, uh, you know, it's going to get fixed by the testing team and the development team, of course. Once it gets fixed, it gets a new status called as fixed. The tester will retest the code. And once if it passes the code, the defect is not there anymore and that they have performed a couple of tests uh, to ensure that it's not there, it's going to get uh, the status as closed. But then if it keeps failing again, it's going to open again and this gets assigned to a developer and the loop uh, goes on and on until it gets closed. This is how a bug life cycle works in today's world of software development. Coming to question number five, uh, it says how can we perform spike testing in JMeter? Well, JMeter again is another very popular uh, thing whenever we talk about uh, software testing and I'm sure if you have this video, you might know what JMeter is, right? So it comes with uh, you know, a timer that has the capability to handle multiple threads at once. So uh, what JMeter does is that it has the ability to get the required number of threads, release them at once. Uh, you know, it causes a spike. Hence the name spike testing. Once you start assigning multiple threads, once you start handling them, and once you start, uh, you know, pushing down, uh, shoving this down across a bottleneck of tests, uh, it will show if there is a failure that exists or not. In that particular case, spike testing involves, uh, you know, spiking the application or spiking the software with a lot of threads to see if it either fails execution or not. Uh, that is one of the most important things that you have to know about spike testing. Coming to question number six, it says, what is silk test? Well, silk test is actually a tool that was developed, uh, you know, to help all the testers perform uh, functionality testing and of course, regression testing as well. Now, whenever you have an application at hand, performing regression and functionality testing is extremely important as you know it. Uh, you know, silk test is actually a tool whenever uh, we work on applications, either, uh, you know, mostly it will be based on Java or it will be based on Windows. But of course, it can be used for client server architecture or web based applications too. Uh, uh, what it does for us, what's the main thing that silk test helps us to do is that it helps preparing a complete test plan. It manages these test plans for us. And of course, it provides direct access to the databases that are present where we can validate the data, where we can change the data, where we can work with it and of course, carry on all the things that's required to perform testing in a structured way. Coming to question number seven, uh, it states define requirements traceability metrics. Well, there's another way this question can be asked. Uh, you know, the interviewer can ask saying define RTM. RTM actually stands for requirement traceability matrix. So it's the same. So what this matrix is, is that it's actually a bi-directional matrix, which has the complete capability to capture the details of what the requirements are. And of course, the traceability of the same too. So this matrix actually gets created at the initial steps of a project and we use this to track the requirement and to see what, is the, what are the deliverables at hand, what are the business requirements and how we can go from having the requirements to bridge the gap with the deliverables and provide the same. So as the name suggests, it's how you keep in touch with requirements and make sure that your deliverables match with the requirements. So this is a matrix which will give you a very structured way of doing that. Now, coming to question number eight, uh, it states, what is elementary process? 
well uh, you know many software applications that we have today will consist of many many elementary processes and when you're talking about elementary process you have to always talk about the types of elementary processes out there because this will either definitely be a follow up question or the interviewer uh, himself or herself will be expecting you to know what static uh, elementary processes and of course what dynamic elementary processes as well uh, when we talk about dynamic elementary process right this is one of those processes where we have you know, a structured way of how we can move data from one location to another uh if you're wondering if it's going to be data inside the application or the software itself no it can either be inside it can be within the application or you can ingest the data from outside as well so inbound data and outbound data if it keeps moving around and if you have the channel for that that's dynamic elementary process but then when we talk about static elementary process it's all about maintaining the data that's present in the application itself and of course working with it and seeing how uh, you know the data behaves with the application too that's static elementary process Coming to the ninth question, uh, it states highlight the role of uh, QA uh, in project development. Quality assessment, uh, that's what QA stands for, is one of the most important things in my opinion, at least when it comes to project development. Because uh, with quality assessment, what we're trying to do is we're reducing all the defects and the errors we might come up with. Uh, you know, if there are any bugs that you think that might occur with version changes or in the future, you can attack that and fix it even before it occurs as well. And of course, you can maintain the highest quality as per the specifications. And whenever you deliver the product, it's going to be completely error free and it should be thoroughly tested too. And of course, quality assessment helps with that. And then when we're talking about how you can test projects and hunt for failures, right? This is where it will show you, uh, you know, the girth of the application in a way, the strength of it or its failure as well. So we call it fault tolerance. Fault tolerance is basically how hard can you push the application towards its failure? Uh, you know, that's what fault tolerance is. And with QA, you can actually uh, find a lot of methodologies to do that. Too. So uh, understand this QA is the most important thing, uh, most important role. It holds equal parameters to software development itself whenever we're talking about a product or a project at hand too. Now, coming to the 10th question, uh, it states, what are the tools of performance testing? Uh, again, this is a question where you can easily get carried away by multiple tools out there, right? So you see four on your screen right now, but understand this, that there are multiple, multiple tools out there. Uh, these four are extremely popular ones, so I thought it's worth a mention. Uh, we have Load Runner, we have QA Load, uh, Web Load, and of course, Silk Performer too. So from HP, uh, we have Load Runner. This is one of the testing tools that has a lot of environments for you, a lot of platforms, a lot of databases. So if you have any web applications that need thorough testing, Load Runner is the way you should consider. And then from Compuware, uh, we have a QA Load. QA Load, again, is a very popular uh, tool that will give you a plethora of databases to work with, uh, care-based systems, and of course, uh, for your web-based testing too. And then from RadView, we have a web load. Web load is again, uh, you know, used to compare all the running tests and measure it directly against the running metrics. And then we have the rational performance tester from IBM. It is used to find out the presence of bottlenecks and of course, find ways to remove them too. And then the last one we have from Borland is of course, Silk Performer. Silk Performer is a very popular tool that will let, uh, let you analyze, predict, and of course, check the behavior of an e-business environment in total too. So, you know, these are some of the four or five tools that are extremely popular today. Of course, uh, if you know any other tools too, you can definitely mention them. And don't just state them, uh, you know, you're four on the screen. And it always adds a little impressiveness if you can actually talk about it rather than just uh, blatantly mentioning it. I would really suggest you guys to talk about it in one or two lines at the max. Coming to question number 11, uh, it says explain the concepts of test fusion report and QTP. Test fusion reports is one of the most important things we have because here we're trying to display all the different aspects of how a test uh, ran as soon as the tester finishes the test. This is a report that will uh, hold a lot of value for testers because here we are displaying uh, everything about where the application failed, where it passed, what was the data that we used. Uh, you know, you will have complete detailed analysis of every single checkpoint to check if the application passed there or failed there. And of course, you can have screenshots, you can have a lot of details, you can have videos to show uh, the discrepancy too. So it's a compilation. It's a, it's, it's a very important document that will show showcase basically the entire testing process. So you'll have the overview, you'll get the details of where it failed, it'll show all the inconsistencies and a lot, lot more too. So if uh, we're talking about QTP, uh, if you have uh, one document that is extremely important in testing, that's going to be the test fusion report. And then coming to the 12th question, it states, what are the different levels of software testing? 
There are four very important levels of software testing that you should know about. They are acceptance testing, integration testing, system testing, and of course unit testing. And guys, if you are at this video preparing for a software uh, testing interview, I am sure you should uh, know what these are. Well, if you do not know uh, these four levels in software testing, I would highly suggest you head to one of our IntelliPath blogs to check them out and understand them in detail. You know, this is a basic question, of course. This is a question that's going to get asked a lot, uh, you know, and if the interviewer expects a lot of uh, information more than what, uh, you know, we can provide in one or two questions, you definitely need to have the knowledge to attack that too. So I would definitely suggest taking that approach. And then coming to the 13th question, uh, it states, when would testing fit right into the development life cycle? Well, well, this is actually a very, very tricky question. So make sure you think about it for a second to answer. You might very well say when the entire application is built, we're going to test it and be done with it. Well, you can do that, but that is not preferred by anyone today because, uh, you know, whenever you're building an application or whenever you're executing itself, testing is preferred. Now, uh, as soon as you finish a build, test it, make sure it performs well and then take it again. Uh, you know, this is how the trend is right now with the world. Uh, testing is done alongside the building process and the execution process because this at the end of the day is going to save a lot of money. It's going to uh, save a lot of time and that is the most important assets for any organization, right? But this is not not the only way of where testing would fit in an organization. Uh, it actually depends on the scenario at hand. It depends on the client. It depends on the requirement, time frame, budget. There's a lot of places uh, where, uh, you know, you can either fit a good amount of testing in or you can remove it. And of course, uh, you know, fill for it uh, in some other time as well. But understand that after you mention that testing can be done along with build, also end your answer with saying, uh, you know, it depends on the complete scenario, as I just mentioned. Coming to question number 14, it states, what is random testing? Well, random testing is a question that's not very random in the interviews because this is going to get asked and this is a very, very popular question. And as the name itself suggests, random testing is one of these testing methodologies where the data that we ingest is completely uh, done in a random way, either by uh, you know manually going to do it or of course, we're going to have a tool that's going to automate and uh, start pushing in random data in our ingestion process as well. So what are the test results we can get from a random testing? You know, these test results will tell you the performance of the application and, and on how uh, it performs whenever it sees these random inputs and of course, random data too. So the results are assessed, uh, you know, completely based on the requirements to see if the deliverable or the product that's being tested matches all the requirements, even though it sees uh, random data in a completely random manner, you know, whether it fails or not, or how, how much can you push the application uh, to the randomness until it fails. So this is a very important thing you should know about random testing. Coming to question number 15, it states, what is test ng? Test ng is something you should know at this point in time if you are, uh, you know, watching this particular video because it is one of the world's most popular testing frameworks that we have today. It's used equally by developers and testers both because it provides top-notch exception handling tools that we have today. And exceptional handling is uh, the middle name of software testing, right? And of course, that and a lot of other tools, techniques, uh, mechanisms and methodologies where you can have the program running and not stop it and terminate it into intermittently and you know perform all your tests changes and of course rerun it too if you're talking about small programs of course you can have it to stop and restart it and work with it but if you have to build big applications it's going to take a lot of time right in that particular case this is a popular testing framework that does a lot so it's an explosive package and as i told you you really should know about test ng if you're at this particular video coming to question number 16 it states what is defect cascading Defect cascading means, uh, you know, as the name suggests, is something which is very simple, which will lead to a catastrophe if not handled. Defect cascading is when one defect leads to another defect. So the first defect will already exist and you might uh, or might not catch it as a tester. And if that isn't handled and fixed, it might uh, lead down and, uh, you know, tumble across and cause multiple other defects too. It's not like one defect is going to cause one more defect. So at the end of the day, your entire product might not work at all because one defect was not handled. And it, and it might mess up a lot of things uh, in the database, in the application itself too. So, uh, you know, it is very, very important to remove the defects to make sure we do not, uh, you know, allow this kind of a cascading thing to happen where it will uh, have a really bad result too. So to make sure that we don't come to this, extensive testing is required. Now, coming to question number 17, that says mention some of the popular tools used for automation testing. 
Well, automation testing is another very important thing when we talk about software testing and uh, you know, there are many, many tools out there. Uh, we have Selenium, of course, we have Rational Robot, we have HP Unified Functional Testing, or it's also called as UFT for short, and we have the Rational Functional Tester from IBM too. Of course, these are not the only tools that exist. Many uh, companies will have their own custom solutions for testing out there. But then when you're thinking about the open source applications or whenever you're thinking about something which even costs money, right, it's going to have a popularity for some reason because it's going to be doing a very good job at automation testing. And of course, if you know many other tools as well, you can definitely, uh, you know, mention them. So coming to question number 18, it can be a follow up since you said Selenium in the previous question. So uh, the question says, what are the important components of Selenium? Of course, you really don't have to explain all of the single components uh, in case of those are follow up questions, but you have to know that there's four main components in Selenium. That's the Selenium grid. We have the web driver, which is the most important thing. We have our Selenium remote control and of course the Selenium IDE or the integrated development environment itself. So these four are uh, formed to be the foundational or I say the most important uh, components of selenium so when you ask this question make sure to mention that and then coming to question number 19 uh, it states can you rate yourself on a scale of a 1 to 10 depending on your level of proficiency in software testing well again uh, this is another very tricky question because uh, you know you can be optimistic to a point where uh, you know you will know how much you know software testing right so simply don't go out to say 9 or 10 uh, in that particular case, if you think that, you know, you are a 6 or a 7, make sure to say 6 or 7. There's really no harm in that. Uh, if you genuinely believe that you are a 6 or a 7 and you go on to say 10, uh, you know, you are going to get asked extremely difficult questions or probably questions in depth that you might not uh, have the capability or the skills to answer. And in that particular case, it will not help your candidature, but it will hurt it, right? So uh, the interviewer is trying to see how much of an understanding you have on the subject, how confident you are and how spontaneous uh, can you be when you ask this question too. So answer it as honestly as possible. And of course, uh, you know, when you ask any of these questions, in fact, from this question till the last question that we are going to discuss, be as honest uh, as possible. And of course, uh, we have the 20th question that states, why are you applying for the software testing role in our company? Now, I cannot give you one answer uh, that's going to fit for everyone who's gonna, who's watching this video, right? Because this depends on your interest. Some some of you might have uh, extreme interest towards software testing. Uh, you know, we might have a couple of audience who are looking towards software testing because it's very trending. They like to do it. They have an inclination to do it or because it pays really good money to have complete proficiency on software testing too. So based on what your answer is, make sure you keep it in a convincing way and make sure you talk about why software testing is important for that particular company, how you will add value to the team, the knowledge that you bring along with, uh, uh, you know, you to that particular domain too. Now, software testing is going to is going to be needed in all the domains, you know, even in the field of medicine, uh, you know, web applications, website development, wherever it is, software testing is needed, right? So uh, what will help you a lot when answering this question is when you know what domain you're applying for, what company you're applying for, the job description, what the company does in detail and a lot of other things too. So make sure to take that kind of an approach to talk about why software uh, testing is important and why do you think you are inclined towards software testing for your career too. Coming to the 21st question, uh, it says, has your prior education helped you with software testing in any way? Of course, if you're a fresher or you can be an experienced professional too, this question will get asked. Uh, in that particular case, if you're a fresher, do talk about if you ever had a subject, uh, you know, where you learned something about software testing in college or not. Uh, if you're a fresher and if you haven't had any sort of experience with software testing, of course, you can say no. But uh, another very good way to talk about is in case if you actually did some testing yourself, uh, even though it, it might not be in the name of software testing, but you had to test something out, uh, you know, check, check exceptions, check bugs or whatever it is in any application that you might have uh, uh, built or something during the course of college, make sure to talk about that. And of course, if you are an experienced professional, uh, you know, there's a good chance you can start your answer saying you're an experienced professional. But again, if you have any certification programs you can talk about that too and how uh, you know you would rather use all this knowledge be it in college or a certification program and how you will put it into effect for that particular company and then coming to the 22nd question it states what is your plan after joining for this software testing role now again this is a question where you can get carried away but i definitely suggest you have to keep the answer concise to this one do explain in a structured way on how you can work with 
uh, the development team sit alongside them uh, you know work with how you can uh, you know put aside assets work or work on methodologies techniques how you can have the communication that's extremely required between the development team and the testing team and of course other necessities uh, as well to build a structured way on how you will fit into the organization how you will use the latest trends that are present today and of course how you'll implement them too and at the end of it after you've done all this it will always add a lot of value to say uh, you know, that you're going to verify if everything works or not uh, because verification that last bit of uh, correction and polishing uh, sometimes actually takes a software by making it or breaking it too so that's a very important thing that i would definitely suggest uh, you know that you should mention coming to question number 23 uh, it says do you have any previous experience in the testing industry well with this particular question if you do have any experience make sure to talk about that and of course uh, if you do not have any experiences in that particular industry itself well uh, you know you can just probably uh, say no and of course uh, talk about how you think uh, you or your inclination is to that particular industry right as i just mentioned software testing is one of these uh, fields where you can uh, uh, where you can you know be working uh, on a completely different product from one company to the other so to what industry you're moving to understand the importance of that understand what's expected for of you as a software uh, tester and of course if you have had any experiences do talk about that coming to question number 24 it says do you possess any other skill that can add value to the software testing role well of course you know all the primary skills is something that you definitely have to mention when answering this question right you'll require java knowledge testing uh, knowledge in html sql jira css pmp that's project management selenium and a lot of other things too but what are the other skills that you will require you will require good team communication you will require to have a good communication skills in general because sometimes you might have to present uh, certain things sometimes you have to document all of these in general and you need to have a knack uh, to find things that are uh, you know where things might fail right to understand where things might fail to catch that bug it's, it definitely is a skill and i would like to call it a knack uh, and an inclination too so for that in that particular case i definitely think that you know answering this way is going to help add a lot of value to your candidature and of course uh, convince the recruiter of your proficiency in the subject too now coming to the last question it says have you earned any sort of certification to improve your learning and implementation process well, at this point in time, if you're at this video or the 25th question, you really would know the value of a certification program, right? So you will get a lot of knowledge, a lot of exposure. You'll get knowledge, uh, you know, you'll be taught by industry level experts. You will have industry level projects, industry grade projects, uh, you know, and case studies that you'll be working on. You will get a lot of videos. You will, you'll be tutored in a way where you can go from a beginner all the way to becoming a complete expert or having complete proficiency in the subject itself. Now, now, uh, that is all good that's for you now what is it going to say to the interviewer there right it's going to show the interviewer that you've put in the time you've put in the money and of course you've put in the skills that are required to build your career towards this you might be coming from a very different background towards software testing you might be coming from a commerce background a finance background you might be a digital marketing expert who's uh, you know who's put in a couple of months to learn software testing so it's going to show that you have an interest to build your career in this particular uh, domain and of course is going to show that you know you've put in the right amount of time it means that you have an aspiration and you have an inclination towards this career too and it's not only that right if you've picked up a certification program and you've completed it and mastered everything in the in that particular program it means that you are an effective learner uh you know you have the complete capability to learn something work on it build a project using that solve solutions and solve problems and all of that too, right? So what adds the most value when you're answering this question is to talk about how you have used a certification program. Of course, you can start your answer by saying, you know, uh, you, you can uh, briefly list all the certification programs from where you got certified and all of that. But uh, instead of talking about what all you learned in the certification program, start with talking about what projects you attacked, what problems you solved and how you made use of it practically. Because uh, an interviewer or a recruiter is definitely interested in what impact came out or what outcome came out of you becoming an expert through a certification program. So I would definitely suggest taking that approach to answer this particular question we hope this software testing interview questions and answer set was very helpful for you all if you have any other questions if you have any comments or any sort of feedback make sure to head down to the comment section and do let us know we'll be more than happy to help you out there on that note i wish you well i wish you all the best for all of your interviews and i'll see you on the next one